Dudettes and Dudettes. How are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to Tella Chazzy. Yeah, I'm starting to do this a little bit more frequently because I've had a lot of TV shows to talk about, you know. Been watching a lot of series and stuff all over the place, you know. So I have a feeling that Tella Chazzy is going to become even more popular than Cinema Chazzy up in the two. But <laughs> anyway, so today's series that I'm going to review is called Between, you know. And it is, in my opinion, a very underrated gem on Netflix. You know, I say underrated because, well, I don't think it got a lot of very positive reviews. Views. I don't know a lot of people who actually talk about it or may have even seen it, you know, and, and because it was never renewed for more than two seasons, I think that it was kind of a flop, you know, in terms of what Netflix considers to be good and bad, but I actually enjoyed it a lot, you know. It's a very interesting series because it starts off so badly, like the first few episodes are just terrible, I gotta be honest, you know, there's like, there's very little build up, you know, because well, usually, usually when you start a TV show, you gotta give it a little bit of time. You gotta be patient, you know. Give it, give it a few episodes to sink in, you know. Or even the first season, you know. Whenever I'm watching a TV series, I always give at least the first season a chance to try to convince me, you know. It's very rare where a show grips me already from the get go. You know, the first few episodes already make me become really addicted. Like for example, Friends. You know, that was wow. Friends is an example of the perfect sitcom, the, the perfect series because I got hooked just like two or three episodes in, you know. And next thing I knew, I watched all 10 seasons. But anyway, so Between was kind of like that, actually. Because when it started, the first few episodes kind of dragged on a little bit, you know. But let me tell you guys about the plot. I should have probably started with that. Should have probably led with the actual plot. But anyway, so... It takes place in a little town called Pretty Lake in the United States and there is a very strange virus, a disease of sorts that starts eradicating everybody over the age of 21, you know? So only, like it kills everyone in the city except for those who are under 21, you know? And they are left to fend for themselves and try to figure out what the hell is going on. And so there are a lot of elements of mystery and suspense, you know? I wouldn't say that it delves too much into horror, although there are a few unsettling and disturbing moments, but it's not anything like, like a Silent Hill or anything like that, you know? It's totally watchable. It's nothing too bad, but there are a few instances where you do feel a little uncomfortable, you know, uh, but it's kind of like, how can I say, try to imagine maybe Stranger Things meets uh, Black Mirror. Maybe, you know, something like that. Like, so like take a little bit of the of the family friendliness of Stranger Things and then mix it with the, the darker uh, moments in Black Mirror, you know? So that's kind of like what Between is. And it started, there are actually many different themes, you know, we're talking about the government quarantining the town after the disease spreads, and then the residents trying to figure out what the hell they're gonna do and trying to survive and ration food, you know? And, and there there's a little bit of romance here and there because it's pretty much a bunch of kids trying to run the place, you know? So it's pretty freaking crazy. Now, here's the thing. Uh, originally, the series ran from 2015 to 2016, you know, so there aren't going to be any more seasons as, as, as far as I can tell here. I have my little cheat sheet. There are no talks at all of there being, um, of there being uh, any more seasons because I really think that, I don't know, I guess maybe uh, they just thought it wasn't profitable for the network or something, but I actually liked it a lot. I, I enjoyed the first season much more than the second, although there are pros and cons. I can definitely say that the character development was a lot stronger in the second season, depending on which character you're talking about. We have Jeanette McCurdy playing one of the main characters called Wiley, who is actually, she gets pregnant and becomes a mom, you know, and then it's it's a very strange roller coaster of character development in this one specifically, because she goes from not caring to suddenly really caring, you know, it's a, it's a slow progress but it's a very strange build up and Jeanette McCurdy isn't exactly an Oscar worthy actress or anything but I gotta say she she's come a pretty long way since her iCarly days you know I mean I don't know I think that in the first season she was pretty much just like a block of wood you know but in the second season you know she started to uh, to kind of uh, show off her acting chops a little bit you know she kind of started to become less of a Kirsten Stewart uh, figure you know because let's be real Kirsten Stewart sucks Troubling news coming in from Pretty Lake. There have been 36 confirmed deaths since Monday. Extensive protests have erupted outside the area. None of this makes any sense. There has been a frustrating lack of new information. What's going on here? It's been confirmed that the disease is accelerating. So anyway, we start to see a lot of uh, dynamics within the community being tested, like kind of like Walking Dead. If you guys have seen The Walking Dead, uh, well, I haven't seen it since what? Maybe the... 
the sixth or seventh season. I don't know. I stopped watching after the, the whole Negan Saviors timeline thing there. It just got way too confusing. But the first three seasons to me were just awesome, you know, and it really showed how a group dynamic can shift abruptly depending on a certain amount of bad eggs in the group or not, you know. So let me try to explain that better. A, a group of 10 people in a survival horror movie like a zombie apocalypse, they will band together and try to survive. But if one of them goes astray, then it's very easy for the other group to turn against them, you you know now if maybe like three or four or even half of them go rogue then you have a civil war on your hands and that's pretty much how between works you know because it gives you this close-knit community it's a small town everybody knows each other everybody grew up there blah 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 this and that but then once they are isolated and quarantined you know and forced to be where they are kind of like how what we're going through right now right I mean uh I watched this series right during the, the COVID pandemic situation. It's kind of ironic actually. But anyway, so the point is that it shows you how people behave, you know, in this enclosed environment. And some of them turn on each other, others become allies, you know, friends become enemies, enemies become friends, you know, the whole kind of thing. And it really explores a lot of different uh, details, you know. There are a lot of different layers to this series. And I actually think it's really nice. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. And that's really saying something because, you, like, I don't know, because it, it's... I, I'm sort of like the king of unpopular opinions sometimes like I will really like something that other people hate or I will hate something that a lot of people like I, but I don't really care I'm entitled to my opinion you know and, and everybody else is too and I honestly think that this show does not deserve the hate that it gets the criticism you know because I really think that I mean yeah it's not like the the, the, the most perfectly cast series on Netflix you know because I don't know some of the people it just didn't really convince me too much the actors and actresses but at least the main characters the main ensemble you know they really really got to me and I almost cried at one point because there was a character, spoiler alert, there was a character named Samantha who actually dies in the second season and I was really rooting for her to get with Chuck who's one of the other characters, you know. There's like a little romance there, a jock and an isolated outcast girl and she's actually pretty attractive and I actually cried and she took a freaking bullet to the skull, you know. It was like the most unexpected death since uh, freaking uh, uh, Hank from uh, Breaking Bad, you know. It was really, actually that was expected but I don't know. It just I, I just didn't want it to happen. I really like this character, you know? And I mean, those of you who watch shows like The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones, you know what it's like to lose characters all the time, you know? But it's different when you have such a small community, a small group of characters, you know, banding together, and you pretty much memorize everyone's name and what they do and how they are, and then one of them dies, man. And the virus is actually, we find out later that it was actually a government-funded project where they actually wanted to test a, a pathogen, you know, to try to eradicate the population you know because there were too many people living there and then they send in a scientist to to actually infiltrate and try to be like a double agent but he pretends to help and he actually does you know it actually got really confusing at one point because he claimed to have a cure which actually did work but then at the same time he was sent there to kill everyone you know it was that, that was that was a uh, it made it made sense when I watched it but now that I'm trying to talk about it, it's just it's just coming out all wrong Citizens of Pretty Lake, if you are watching this, then you are among the lucky ones. It has been confirmed that no one over 22 is left alive. But anyway, look, uh, aside from those themes, this series explores a lot about what it's like to truly be in a survival state, you know, because it really pushes people to the limits, to the, because there are characters who are very, very selfless and they, actually there's a very interesting dynamic because there are a few characters who are selfless, others who are selfish and those who are just in the, in the middle, you know, and I, I like the characters who are in the middle, like they want to help others, but they also have self-preservation instincts. They want to help themselves as well. While there are characters who just want to help themselves and don't care about anyone else and there are actually other characters one in particular his name is Gordon who is selfless to the point of being annoying you know that might be a pretty controversial opinion but let me explain why because this guy like he is constantly talking about the town and the people and, and like and sharing food and this and that man it's weird because like how did this guy not die of hunger you know because guys there is such a thing as being too selfless you know because if you only care about others and not yourself you're gonna die <laughs> you know we're talking about a, a a universe established in this tv series where you need to to survive you know it's like you're in the walking dead like why would you like, it, it doesn't make sense for you to want to help others and you can't be 
a selfish douche and just want everything for yourself, you know, but you, can, you, you can't have two extremes. You got to be right in the middle. You have to help others. You can't be selfish, but you also have to be selfless at the same time. You know, there's a balance, you know, if there's food, then sh and, and, there, and there's somebody else with you, share the food with the other person evenly, you know, or if there's three or four people, try to share as much as you can. So everybody gets a slice, you know, yourself included. So if you just give to other people, then you're left with nothing. How do you know they're going to to give to you when they have anything don't ever expect people to to act towards you the same way that you act towards them you know and i've found that out the hard way many times in life it's actually a very good lesson but anyway this gordon character is really freaking annoying you know because it's it's so strange to say this because literally the most righteous character on the show is the one who most irritates me you know and he does die unfortunately he gets shot you know there's a whole subplot there but it does explore a few different themes as well. There, there's a moment where one of the characters, Ronnie, tries to rape Wiley, you know, and it's crazy. The dude is really messed up. He takes drugs, then he then he stops and relapses, you know. it's a, There's a whole crazy dynamic there. There are a lot of different um, moments where you feel like, you know, you just want to see more and more, you know. It actually hooked me very well. I thought that it was really, really cool, you know. There was one character uh, who, his name is Adam. I don't know the actor's name. Let me find out here. Jesse Carrere played Adam Jones. This kid sucks. I have. To, I cannot let this review go by without saying this. I don't know if it's the character or the actor, but this guy sucks. I mean, he, he seemed like he was constantly high. You know, this guy was stoned throughout the whole entire series, especially in the first season, man. I don't know. In the second season, he pulls a Jesse Pinkman and shaves his head. You know, it gets a, and he. I don't know, but he starts pulling guns on people. But in the first season, he's like constantly with this very strange, like a a, a stoner kind of vibe. You know, like freaking. Yeah, I know. It makes total sense. I agree. Wait, but I don't agree anymore. We have to do something. Oh my God, my mom died. Mom, mom, mom. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it was. If it's like it, the character was supposed to be like this, or maybe the actor just doesn't know how to act. You know, and at that point they were like, you know, we're we're already way too late into into production. Let's just leave the kid here. You know, let him take his drugs and do. I don't know, man. You know, I just I just think it was horrible. That was so. My God. Ah, like it was aggravating because the kid played a freaking block. It's like I, I have never thought that I would see the day where I would say that somebody made Channing Tatum look like a good actor. And boy, for me to say that, you guys know how Channing Tatum acts. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'll probably talk about that in another video. escape pretty late. But anyway, guys, I think I, I'm coming up towards the end of the review here, you know, and uh, now what I want to say is that if I were to give this show a rating, if I could give it a rating, I would probably say maybe eight out of 10, you know, not all the way to 10. It's not perfect. It's not flawless by any stretch of the imagination, but there were a few moments that bogged it down. Like for example, this freaking actor who I just talked about momentarily ago, but I think that there was a lot of appeal and I actually would have enjoyed to see another season, you know, because the second season ends with a very interesting cliffhanger, you know, because apparently the, the government actually uh, takes certain citizens and then they inject them with the, with the cure and then they're, they're cured, you know, and then they are allowed to go back into society, but to different places. So, they can't spread the word or else they're gonna get executed so there was a very interesting uh, uh, payout you know but then we find out at the very end of the of the last episode of the second season that the the government has actually spread the virus and people are starting to die everywhere now why because the government has the cure so they will be able to make money off of it I imagine you know kind of like with the vaccines in the COVID right now but I, th I think that there could have been at least one more season. I would have enjoyed at least three seasons, you know, even if you wrap it up in the third one. I mean, I think that there was enough content there to tell one more season's worth of a story, you know, but because the second season came out in 2016, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I don't think they're ever going to renew it. And even if they do, is this a thing? Like, can you renew a television series after so many years? You know, can you go back to it? Because Friends, for example, but then again, Friends is going to have just a one-off reunion special. I don't think they're actually going to reboot the series. But anyway, so uh, what I think about it is that 
I think that there could have been a third season. I think it's really entertaining. I like it a lot. And I definitely recommend it, you know. And if you've already seen it, drop a comment below letting me know what you thought about it. And I think it's going to be nice to, to get your opinion on that. And, uh, oh, and by the way, subscribe to my channel if you happen to like this video because I do a lot of different reviews here. I actually do a lot of different kinds of content. I release videos every single day, sometimes one, sometimes two. You never know. That's why you got to hit the notification bell to always stay up to date, okay? And that's it, guys. That's all I wanted to say for today. This is Chazzy signing out for now. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Wiley! This is really scary stuff. Try that again. Back off! You don't have a choice.